All right, this is a pretty fast paced, fun roll. Alex is a beast and very strong. The way I like him, Alex shoots for my hips, but my underhook prevents him from dropping down lower. He tries to see if he can still drop down, but it'll be impossible with that underhook keeping him up. We break connection and I try for a quick outside trip, but I couldn't off balance his upper body enough. Alex responds with an Osoto Gari attempt and I step out of it. Both of his grips are now controlling the inside space, which enables him to drop down from my hips. He tries to drive through for a double, but switches to the body block. And as he does, I hit a really clean Ogaruma. This was so sick. Pretty sweet takedown if I do say so myself. I got all the style points. What I did was use his momentum against him and swiped out his lag. He should have stayed on the lags rather than switching to a body block. This is something that Joe Breeze and I went over in our upcoming wrestling for Jiu Jitsu course. As we land, I try not to land on him, but he pulls me down onto him. Alex is very disciplined to not allow inside position and very disciplined to use his frames. This is a very common theme that you'll see throughout the role and how I use my Jiu Jitsu theory concept angles beat frames to beat his frames. Because I don't have inside position on his upper body, I don't have inside position grips. It means I don't have control of his upper body and he's able to turn away from me. As he does, I try to hit a quick back take, but I can't get my chest centered to his back quick enough. I can't get chest to torso connection and we end up in half guard with him having a low knee shield. Alex now frames in my head to get my weight off him, so I go around the frame by moving my body the opposite direction, rather than trying to fight through the frame. Again, I have no real control of his upper body, so he's able to turn, but as he does, I jump on his back and my body weight drags him down. He's got a two on one grip on what would be my choking arm, and the way you want to break this grip is by peeling it off by the palm, and I try to pass it to my top hook, but I have no luck. I was really tired this day going into the rolls, but I needed content, and as I feel bad for myself, Alex brings my arm across his head. So again, I have no real control of his upper body. He transitions to turtle and then to what's called a quad pod in wrestling. This is a great position to try to buck someone off from, but I have a great technique that I use to deal with this. What I do is be patient and wait for him to either try to stand up or change his angle to create a steeper ramp for me to fall off. And when he does, I pass his wrist to my other hand for what's called the wrist ride, and then take out the remaining post by lifting it forward. This takes away two of their four posts and makes it impossible to stay up. Now I start attacking with a body triangle submission. People on social media always tell me that the body triangle submission only works on smaller and weaker training partners. Alex is pretty strong and a tough guy. He knows to spare his ribs and his organs. To me, it's a valid submission, it's no big deal. Quickly, a word from the sponsor of today's video. So few of us have the opportunities to be heard in our lives. Sometimes it's hard to share what's going on in your life, even with close friends. Sometimes those friends and family don't know how to advise us or give bad advice because they're so close to us. Having someone you can talk to like a therapist that's completely unbiased can help you more than you might imagine. Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a human who lives in this world who's going through a hard time, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. I frequently struggle with anxiety and bouts of depression as well, and it can interfere with my day-to-day -day life, training, and work, which is why I understand the importance of mental health. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible, and this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. There's a link in the description. It's betterhelp.com slash JTJJ. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. If you feel like you could benefit from talking to someone, getting feedback, advice, and help with anything, literally anything you feel is affecting you and your happiness and moving forward in your life, hit that link in the description now or visit betterhelp.com slash JTJJ. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel. Alex shoots in for my hips again, and I've always got my guillotine to fall back on. I want to drop down for the guillotine without his weight controlling my hips, so I back up and wait to drop down. But as I do, I drop too much weight on my left leg and my knee buckles. You can see the grimace on my face. This is probably the most amount of emotion that you've ever seen from me. I briefly think about not continuing, but I really want to use this role for that sick Oguruma from earlier. I'm in a lot of pain though, I'm just in survival mode. So while I'm waiting for my knee to stop hurting so much and kind of assess how bad it is, I'm just blocking off inside position to defend. 
keeping my head glued to my shoulder to stop him from getting underneath my neck, as well as angling my head towards him to prevent the cross face. I do run the risk of Alex backstepping into a leg lock, but I'm always ready to counter that entry. What I'm doing is keeping my elbow glued to my side to prevent the underhook and waiting to see if Alex gets impatient and tries to knee slide without it. But Alex does the smart thing and disengages so that he can re-engage with better grips. He almost clears my legs, but I use my knee shield to make space. Instead of trying to re-guard, I turtle because I'm still assessing the damage to my knee and feeling the pain of it. I was first a little bit lazy denying inside position, but now I'm keeping nice and tight to stop him from getting a seatbelt grip, and again keeping my head glued to my shoulder to prevent him from getting inside there. Unable to take the grips that he needs, he tries to transition to a rolling back take. I use this technique all the time to take backs. The key to success in these back takes as well as countering them is knee positioning. As he goes to roll, I take a reverse underhook for myself and change the angle of my knee for the superior knee positioning which allows me to take his back. I'm now in the truck, which I consider a lower body control only version of the back. I start working for a twister, but Alex is doing a great job grip fighting and I feel like it's going to require a lot of strength to get my grips, so instead I start attacking the groin stretch. This is what I was trying to do, but Alex starts rotating my body towards him and rather than fighting it off, I just abandon the groin stretch and take top position. Immediately I enter into an over underpass. I need to have pressure on his hips to control his hips and prevent Alex from me guarding, but he does a great job using his long frames. Using his frames to keep my head and shoulder away from his hips, I feel like it may be path of least resistance to instead control both legs with what I guess would be called a double overpass. Now again, I go around the frames by moving my body the opposite way that he's pushing my head and change my angle one more time to rid myself of his frames. Now I have control of his hips with a body lock. He tries again to push my head away, but I don't allow him the space to straighten his arm to use it as a long frame. Again, Alex stays disciplined to prevent inside position grips and deny me upper body control, but I do have control of his hips by gluing my arm to them. I wait for him to react and as he tries to turtle, I throw in my hook. Rather than trying to get in a second hook, I throw my shin over his head, which forces him to rotate. As he does, I catch his legs to keep his feet off the mat so that he can't bridge into me. He needs his feet on the mat to bridge into me. He's using a rear naked choke style armbar defensive grip, which can be very tough to break if you just try to pry it out. So instead, I unravel it. I can take my leg off his head because I have his near side leg controlled. The leg over the head prevents them from bridging, but so does controlling their leg. Now I take his left arm out and put my leg back over his head and finish the armbar. That wasn't the best angle, so watch this instead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab his leg here so he can't uh, stack me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my leg off as I pull his, his wrist to me, and now I have access to this arm. Now I put my leg back, I can let go of this leg, down here, finish the armbar. We start again and there's no way I can start standing. Alex jumps right into my half guard and I make sure to establish a knee shield so I can control the distance. I start fishing for a Kimura but I made my intentions too obvious. So instead I take a collar tie and insert my butterfly hook. At this point I'm unsure how much power I'll be able to generate with my butterfly hook but I'm forced to go for something as Alex tries to staple my near side arm and take a cross face. It ends up being a bit scrambly of a sweep but I do end up on top. I should have taken an underhook faster as Alex quickly brings his left arm in front to control the inside space. I really should have prioritized that underhook because now I'm looking for inside position grips to control his upper body. Because I don't have any, I need to use my shin to control him. And this is what Neon Belly is actually used for. You use it for control when you lack inside position with your arms. Not just driving into people's bellies trying to make them fart. I use Neon Belly to enter mounts and Alex quickly gets onto his side to escape. I do a sloppy chair sit back take and end up on the bottom, but I like to right my wrongs right away and immediately throw my leg over his shoulder to start threading the triangle. It's going to be difficult but not impossible to lock it up with his arm framing on me as well as his arm behind me like this, especially with my knee compromised. So I think about the good old fist in the throat to block off that carter artery, but I don't have a good bite on the triangle with my right leg so it's going to be pointless. So instead I transition to the omoplata and as he tries to roll out of it, I'm ready and collect the arm for the armbar. This is one of my favorite counters when my opponent tries to roll out of Omoplata. 
and a great example of leg positioning not being nearly as important for arm bars as people think. As long as you're preventing your opponent from turning into you, wrist control is the most important aspect of an arm bar by far. Make sure to sign up for my newsletter to get free jujitsu tips every single week. Alright, thank you for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or a fist bump, and I'll see you guys next time.